it's JB Rocks for UK Rock News. Uh, it's been a been a little while since I've done the interview, so I'm really really pleased. This one is with Connor, who is the, a member of a rock band you may or may not have heard of yet, but if you haven't, you will. I'm certain of that. They are called Anchor Lane. Uh, they just released their second album, and I don't want to go on and on. I'd rather you heard from Connor a bit more about how they came about and so forth. So, Connor, if you don't mind, I'll hand over to you. If you could uh, tell everyone uh, sort of how it all started, the reason for starting, the name, everything. Um, and, and bearing in mind, I, I mean, I, I have to hold my hands up. I hadn't, I, I kind of only recently got you on my radar I went back to Casino first album and I've it's that's an absolute piece of work uh, as well as the new album so um if it's all right with you we could start right right at the beginning because I think it'd be a real shame for people to miss out on that all right okay um so hello everyone my name is Connor Gaffney from Anchor Lane I'm the singer uh, and I suppose at this point the, the founder of, of Anchor Lane um so uh, when you when you say the start, Jay, um, Anchor Lane started when I was in college at the Academy of Music and Sound in Glasgow, um, and it sort of started the way that every college band starts. You know, you bring people in and you start playing, and then you know some people have got different, you know, uh, ideas of what they want a band to be and things like that. So people come in, people come out, um, and we just sort of started gigging around Glasgow, and and we we gained a bit of a following around around Glasgow and Scotland quite uh, quite quickly and released our first EP, which is called New Beginning, which is still available for people to check out on Spotify. And then about, uh, I'm trying to think of the timeline, about three years later, we um, had recorded and released the first album, uh, Casino, which was produced by Toby Jepson from Wayward Sons. Um, and Little Angels, so that was a that was an experience working with him. Um, the name Anchor Lane comes from a studio that we used to rehearse in, which is just off of uh, George Square, and it's uh, down a wee a wee lane called Anchor Lane. Um, so it was just one of those ones where it was like that's where we're from, that's what that's where we rehearse, and it was kind of a you know, um, it's based in Glasgow, uh, you know. Don't forget your roots type of idea. Well, um, in terms of, it's always horrible trying to describe music because it always ends up being comparisons, and which I don't want to do. Um, what I would say is Casino. Um, there's... There's probably there's probably five songs on there, which if you played them separately, you wouldn't know it's the same band. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, you can really tell there's a lot of different influences and and everything. And and that, that's that's a positive. Trust me, a really big one. There's not a generic sound, which is which is really really fresh. Going on to uh, Cordish Real uh, Reality, it feels uh, as often a second sort of rather than does. It feels matured. Um, you can tell you're tighter, um, yeah. but it's 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 wonderful. I mean, if you like your strong riffs, which you know, um, sort of hard, very current rock music, it's it's bob on. Um, <laughs> excuse me. In fact, I'll tell you what. If I was to make a comparison, I'll make a comparison to a band which I also love, who isn't particularly as mainstream perhaps but i don't know if you've heard tiger cub at all but um, uh, yeah i have yeah yeah yeah, yeah tiger cub yeah, yeah. appreciate, I, I, appreciate I, that I, I love tiger cub and uh i can definitely for me that's i mean it, you, you, you're you're individual but that's the closest i can think if that makes sense because yeah, yeah. You've got the real rock you've got the old school rock vibe as well as the very current sort of sound that's coming out of you know, various places, mainly uh, yeah. Brighton. <laughs> but um, but 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 yeah, I mean, what what are your 
what your things, what your vices, what do you guys do, what, 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 who do you go and see in gigs? What, you know, what makes you what you are? Um, I mean, the, the, the thing for us is like we do have quite a wide, um, like between, between, you know, individually and then like even in between the three of us, it's even wider, like our, our sort of musical tastes and music that we like to, excuse me, to play and listen to is quite wide like our guitarist Lawrence um you know he'll go from listening to uh you know the most brutal death metal um you know um and like you know his his favorite band of all times Pantera but in the same time that he'll listen to that he'll also listen to like hard style um like rave music and then he'll also listen to like the Spice Girls and the Sugar Babes like uh, you know, and then for, for myself, like, I, I'm very into, like, my, like, I like a lot of punk rock, like, Green Day's my favourite band of all time, um, and then I'm also into a lot of the classic rock stuff, a lot of bands like Queen and uh, Free and uh, Thin Lizzy, and then... Uh, oh, well, almost. That kind what's of, that, sorry? The kind of theatrical rock of the song. Yeah, yeah, just, and, and just, I don't know, it's one of those ones where, like, see it, and, and like, one of my other favourite bands is Arctic Monkeys, which is like obviously on the other end, like a you know an indie rock band. I'm with you there. Yeah, I mean, like for me, it's about good songs. It's about great songwriting, um, and that's where bands like Green Day and Arctic Monkeys and Queen, and you know, they stand sort of like ahead of everyone else for me. Um, you know, um, and our drummer Graham's, you know, a big, huge Rush fan, um, as most drummers are. Yeah. Um, but then also likes a lot of like John Mayer and, and, and things like that. So like between the three of us, there is a, a, a massive sort of like pool of influences that that all come in in their own in their own ways, whether it's obvious or it's quite subtle. Um, but the, the thing that we found for, for writing was that um, we wanted to like write pop songs as a rock band, like write interest in pop music as a rock band. So it's like when you know, a rock band will cover like a Lady Gaga song. We're just skipping past the part where Lady Gaga wrote it first. Yeah, got you. I kind of get that. I kind of get that because um, some some of the songs uh, done how, how quite they've got that catchy side. To yeah, it. Do you know what I mean. You know, I'll yeah, get yeah. out of the car and uh, you know, I'm still everything's going. I'm still around. thinking about it. Uh, yeah, which which is yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's quite a talent to be able to make that. But um, what's where, where are you going to go from where you are now? Are you touring? Are you what? What's going on? Can people see you live? Can you yeah, know? yeah. So um, so we're uh, we've had a bit of downtime after we had a we had a headline tour in February, um, which took us from uh, Glasgow. We had a headline show in Glasgow, sold out show in Glasgow, um, for our album release, and then we went all the way down to Plymouth hit everywhere on the way down and then hit everywhere on the way back up um, and we finished in Edinburgh um, for another another sold out show. Um, so yeah, it, it was a good tour. It went really, really well. Um, it was our first time going out uh, on a headline tour, just being us as, the, as the, the main the main event. Um, and so we've had a bit of downtime and now, so we're out um, starting on the 27th of May. We're playing in Glossop. Uh, the Globe, we're doing a, it's called A Night with Anchor Lane, and so it's going to be, we're going to be playing the songs acoustically, it's going to be a bit different, we're going to be telling stories, it's kind of like the the Bruce Springsteen um, Broadway thing, where he kind of talks about the songs and... It's like an unplugged. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of an unplugged thing, but we're going to, you know, tell some stories about the journey of the band so far, and it's, it's going to be it's going to be a good night, um, and then we've, we've got a run of dates um, on the 16th and 17th of June, we're playing a uh, the pub in Lancaster and we're playing um, Suburbia in Southampton and then the reason for us having a conversation we're playing uh, Solway Hall in Whitehaven on the 1st of July um, so we're looking forward to that one as well and we've got Butte Fest we're playing Butte Fest on the Isle of Butte on the 29th of July um, so I, it's, uh, we're, we're going to be busy there's, there's a few more shows that we're still to announce but if you follow the Anchor Lane social pages and sign up to our mailing list and all that good stuff you'll find out all of that there there's some very cool stuff on your page I love that the, your vinyls, the blue vinyl with the kind of yeah. white splatter across it I don't know what I just saw it and went, that's cool and in fact my, um, my, my missus she was looking over my shoulder 
just like that's so cool <laughs> yeah, so, yeah 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 you've definitely got the merch bit nailed i would say um i think that's the thing like you know you can you can do like a black vinyl or something like that but like for what it costs to get it just something different for people because everyone's got black vinyl or they've got red vinyl or they've got one color vinyl but it's like if you can just offer people something that's a bit different like people like to like to have these just wee extra different things and it, it's a collectible thing isn't it back in the day exactly. yeah you know back in the day going back my mother went to see i think it was ultra box in the 80s and when she went to see him she could buy a white vinyl and i've still got yeah. it and it's just this white sort of semi secret but buying at the time it's like wow oh, yeah. so cool um then you go to the other end of the spectrum pitch of this but you're honestly even if you don't want to listen to their music get on there have a look at their vinyl and their merch uh, it's wicked but no uh it i've really really enjoyed having your music on in my car um because that's as with the modern world that's where unfortunately i get to listen to most of my music unless yeah. i'm actually out and uh had a bit of a journey today and i'm i'm i guess an old older member of the rock fraternity if you like uh and the lad next to me who i've only just met um through my normal um much less interesting job uh he um uh sam well, i was sat with him and, and and he absolutely loved it and i just thought that's really cool when you got yeah. you've got music uh because for me it really helps particularly we're going to talk to a band you know, I'll ask my son, he's 17 and very opinionated. I'll ask, you know, but this lad Sam, really nice lad, and he's just, he was sat there and I think he, uh, yeah, he, he really liked it. And I, I just think that, that 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 says a lot because it means you're not going to be niche. You're not no. just going to have a bunch of certain kids or certain people or, you know, I sometimes interview bands and you can just tell that they are aimed purely at people that are middle-aged and over. They're that kind of yeah. soft rock and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I, I don't think there's many bands that, that, that successfully do uh, across the ages. Apart, I'll tell you one that definitely does, which you've already mentioned, is Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, definitely. That's one of my favourite bands and my, my daughter, who's, you know, uh, a, a teenage girl, uh, loves them. And yeah, yeah. How did that happen? But but yeah, I think I think the sound you've got is wicked. Uh, I, I hope you. I hope you uh, you stick with it. It's raw, and you've got to be raw, haven't you? It's no good yeah. to you know uh, tight and raw and not over polished, and that that that's the best way I can describe uh, you know everything you've you've done on there. But what people need to do is not listen to me going about it. Or you talking about it they just need to get on spotify and have a listen you've got plenty of people already following you that should tell them enough you said yeah like you just said you've been selling out gigs and by the way how was it touring for the first time because people want to know this right people have this image that they see on these films and everything else and they think basically you're yeah. on a bus absolutely off your trolley for the entire time which in a, in a real world isn't really feasible but was it no. messy so um touring touring's funny i mean we spent the majority of last year touring um doing a lot of support touring um and i i love touring um and if you had one of the other boys you'd probably get a a, a far different answer um, because they, <laughs> Please they, tell they, me why. well they, they find it a bit more difficult than i do um I, I really like being away from home and sort of like seeing new places every day and having a schedule and and you know sort of having like a real purpose of you need to be here by this time and you need to have that and have that. And sure. um, I just, I like, I like that energy. Um, where I, and I like the sort of like unpredictable chaos that comes along with it. Like I, I quite like just being able to accept things are going to go wrong and it's all just a part of it. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, I get, I get that. It's a good philosophy to have. Yeah. Like, cause, cause it is that way where you, you do need to be like, it's not, we're not on a bus, we're not, we've not got tour managers, we've not got techs, we've not got uh, a driver, like, it's it's me, it's Graham, and it's Lawrence, and we're on the road, and we're doing everything ourselves, we're selling our own merchandise, we're loading in, uh, loading the gear in and out of the venues, we're doing all the driving, um, you know, when we get to the hotels, we're having to, you know, like, do all of our own, like, you know, communications with the people who are there and if there's a problem with the booking we need to deal with it like so literally anything it's work 
it's, you're too yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe once you've um, got to where you're going to go, which you, um, I'm sure you will with the sound you've got. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that's when it might get a bit dangerous and messy when you've got people to do all this stuff for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it going that way because none of us are like the the thing for for the, the three of us is like, I mean, the one who probably drinks on tour the most is me, and it's a beer after we play. Just, literally just you know we've got back to the hotel and it's like all right we can chill now and I have a beer and it just lets me kind of settle down after all the yeah. kind of like um but like so, graham graham barely drinks lawrence barely drinks um i don't really see that changing um the thing that will just be nice for us is like if, you know when we get to the point where you know we do have other people that can do these things we can just be more solely focused on our actual preparation for when we're playing um, because it's that we were like, especially when we do support tours, because you're when you're supporting a band on tour, you need to be there when the band, uh, you know, you need to be there for when the other band's loading in, get your your gear and get it ready, and then by the time you've kind of sorted your gear out, you've maybe got like a half an hour window to get something to eat. Then it's your time to sound check. Then you sound check. You come off stage. By the time you set up the merch desk, doors are open. Someone's selling the merchandise. Before you know it, you've got to go in and play, and you've not warmed up. Right. So that's like, that's the, the it, it's so fast and it's so intense. Um, and especially for, um, you know, some of the stuff that, that we have to do, like a warm up's quite, quite important. Um, some of, you know, some of the things that like Graham has to play in the drums and Lawrence has to play in the guitar and that I have to sing. It's not something that you would recommend someone doesn't warm up before they do. Um, especially when you play like the way that we play live, like it's a very intense, energetic show and you want to be, sort of like physically prepared for that, especially when you're going to be doing, you know, like a 13, 14 date tour. Now there's a question. I don't know. I've never asked anyone else this. Um, and I don't know the answer. And it, it's one of those things I've thought about so many times. Now I've quite often gone to gigs to see the warm up act, or, you know, if you want to call it a warm up act, you know, the first opening act, support band, opening or supporting. That's better. Thank you. You're not like, you know, you're not like some comedian stood there making people laugh for the main event. Um, but I always find that the supporting act sounds dulled down. Mm. You know, like the actual, I mean, is that something that happens? Is there, do, do, they, do they just like, for, to use the old, you know, rock term for spinal tap, do they turn it up to 11 for the main act? Do they... Do the, do the sound people kind of go right now? We're going to make it all sound perfect. It's just one of those things I've noticed. Bands which, when they're coming mm -hmm. up, I've heard them live on their own and they sound incredible. It's sometimes supporting, it just don't sound as good. I know we're going off the cuff here. I just wanted to ask someone who know the answer to the question. And as we we're talking about it, I thought good opportunity. No, fair enough. Um, so I've never seen that happen. Um, the difference that I would probably say is that like most, depending on the size of the venue, but like if we're a supporting band, like we don't have a sound engineer out with us. Right. So, you know, like every venue we're playing, it's just the in-house sound engineer. And sometimes the in-house sound en engineer is brilliant. And sometimes okay. they're shit. It's um, simple as that. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of a great area question because it's that we were like, yeah, there could, there could be something. I know that um, I've, I've heard stories of bands, I'm not going to name any names, but I know of bands that have been on tour and um, their sound has been sabotaged. Um, yeah. You know, they've been a supporting band for a, a you know, a fairly big headline act. Um, and, uh, you know, there's been like, you know, the desk has been locked and things like that, so they can't change the settings. And like, there's been, there ha I've heard of things like that happening. It's never happened to us. Um, and I'm only going by what other people have told me, so I, I can't say. Sorry, it's it definitely a really happened. Thing. It was a really random thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I did because you, yeah, you ask it. a question, you get an answer. Yeah, yeah, you've answered it more depth. It, it just anyway, right. Sweeping that aside, so you've told us when you're going to be about. You've got great merch. I'm, I'm slightly baffled, and I think anyone else will be. How um, from casino alone. Mm. you guys are you know aren't a name that everybody knows because that's that's a great album and your new album you. 
uh, you know, course reality is is fantastic. I mean, it it is a move. You know, to move in the right direction, it's it's even better. But um, it, it baffles me you know, on the rare occasion I come across because, as you can imagine, you know, I speak I speak to people who've never made an album sometimes, and I speak to people who are yeah. high up in the country charts or rock charts or whatever. You know, I, I'm I'm really lucky that I get t- to sign the chat and listen to and, and and be involved in music in that way. But um, it, it's not very often I come across a band that I just don't get it. I don't get it. I, I listened to, you know, I, I did the right thing. I started Casino and went through uh, It's Coolest Reality. And, I, you know, they are albums I've played and played and played. I haven't just sort of gone, oh, I've got to listen to this because I'm going to speak to someone. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's been constant in my car. My, the, the, you know, I've got my, the speakers in my car have been hammered. And um, I just I just can't stress strongly enough that we, we've got, you know, we've got we've got a good... UK Rock News does have people that listen, you know, to, to what, what we say on there, which is lovely. And, and, and I, I, I think that's wonderful that anyone care less what I think about music. But um, anyone who sees this interview uh, and doesn't listen to your music, there's something wrong with them, do you know what I mean? They've got, <laughs> uh, and uh, just, as, as I say, don't hold just both albums um, are fantastic. And they are different, um, yeah. so just just get get listening to them. And if you don't like them, let me know, and I won't interview anyone again. Simple as that. So, um, yeah, I I don't normally blow that much smoke up uh, uh, anyone's ass, but um, you deserve it, mate. Uh, oh, you're, appreciate it. Thank you. That's wicked. I, yeah, I'm only gutted. I can't say like, well done to the rest, but I'm sure you'll pass <laughs> it on. I will pass it on definitely. Yeah, please do. And apart from you know, obviously, I know one of them likes li- listening to strange pop music. But we'll we'll sh- <laughs> no, check it. But no, you're quite right. I've got the the same again when I spoke to Young Lad today. I said, uh, you know, uh, he said, "What music do you like?" I said, "Anything I like." And I think yeah. anybody likes music. That's true. I mean, I was a raver in the nineties, so I, I... you know, I can listen to terribly made music from the 90s and go, oh, I had so much fun to this. Terrible music. Um, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, when that was coming out, Nirvana was about, um, yeah. I love that, and, you know, run Metallica. But the point is, you know, uh, Christ, I've been to see Adele. You know what I mean? Uh, there's not really a limit. If, if I think something's worth listening to, I will. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you can tell from the, the eclectic, music if you like the eclectic sort of choice of styles that your band is not in any way going to go that's the only thing we're doing and i love it so do you have anything you want to tell people about the band or anything from here uh if you haven't heard our latest album call us reality make sure you go and check it it's everywhere um make sure that you're following us on all of our socials we're quite funny sometimes um and we've got you know when we're on tour well yeah well i'm gonna be honest you know completely honest we're absolutely hilarious um but, uh, seriously don't get sick comedians right <laughs> yeah just come and see anchor lane you'll get you'll get cheeky glaswegian partner um so yeah come and check us out in our, all of our socials um we've got dates coming up that we've not announced yet throughout the summer we've got exciting things happening um make sure you jump on the train before it's too late Now, listen, Connor. Thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you for having and, me, and thank you for tolerating my weird form of questions um, <laughs> and sort of strange tangents. Um, I wish you all the luck in the world, and I hope one day to meet you and the guys. Um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of do a good yes. write up on a gig or what have you. I'm sure your people and my people can have a chat. Um, I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, one of the best things about this job is I get to quite often go and see bands that I didn't yeah. know I loved until I was going to interview them and then I found their music. So um, a, an example of that is I'm, uh, a complete random tangent, Els Bailey, I'm off to see her in a couple of weeks and if you right. don't know who she is, look her up. Country Music from Bristol. Yeah, That's check not it unusual, out. but she's wicked. But, um, but yeah, so I'm definitely going to be following you. I'm definitely going to be checking out what you do. Um, thanks for your time. Uh, it's you know 
short and sweet. I'll be catching up with you soon. It's Rock News. JB Rocks. Connor from a band that really does rock. Take it easy.